Welcome back. Moving forward. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to add a table to the existing database using Java programs. Now, we did create a successful connection to our existing database. And then, of course, we also created a new database called Java Rocks. And all of this is being done in the previous lessons. So here, I'm just going to demonstrate writing Java program, how to go about actually creating a table or multiple tables right within your database and then later I'm also going to demonstrate how to add fields to the database and then enter data in your database writing Java programs so let's jump right in let me first go ahead and open up the Java Eclipse editor so once I'm in the Java Eclipse editor I'm going to go ahead and begin the process of writing a Java program so that we can create a table within our database called Java Rocks. So let's go ahead, right click on the default package, choose new, click on class, and I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a name. I'm gonna call this creating a table, click finish, and this creates a public class called creating a table. So first things first, I need to go ahead and let me first in fact put a comment. So let's go ahead and do creating a new table in the database or in the java rocks database once that's done i'm going to go ahead and also click on right below the comment here and import our modules the required modules are import java.sql and this could be asterisk right so i can import everything I also need to import java.sql and then more importantly the driver manager perfect semicolon and then of course my public class called creating a table I also need to get my keywords in here public static void main and then of course the string with command line arguments if any open the curly braces set couple of variables so first is for the connection CONN equals null and then I also need the statement we've done this before by the way just good practice statement equals null once I have these out of the way I'm gonna go ahead and do the try block so try parentheses and of course our next step which is registering the JDBC driver and then after we register the JDBC driver we need to create or open the connection so first I'm gonna go ahead and let's put a comment here so it's easier for you to see so step two right or step yep step two is register JDBC driver and let me quickly fix the spelling here of the word string perfect so after the comment I need to say class for name and then of course the name is going to be com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver semicolon great we're done with this next I'm going to go ahead and then fix the syntax quickly so actually quotations inside not outside all right so the class for name is defined within the try block next step or step three is basically to open a connection to our database perfect so let's go ahead and do a system dot out dot print in first so that it displays something like connecting to the selected database perfect next i'm going to go ahead and do conn equals the driver manager dot i'm going to use the get connection and of course specify the path so the path here is going to be jdbc colon mysql colon two forward slashes my local host 
And then of course the port number for the SQL, which is 3306. The name of the database, Java Rocks. And then of course I need to close the quotation here, put a comma, open the quotation, specify the admin name, which is root, close the quotation, comma, and then the password. If you have a password, it'll go between these two quotations. If not, just the two quotations are just fine. Semicolon. So this is my get connection. Now after my get connection, I need to do the system.out.println and just display a message saying something like connected successfully. And of course, quotations and semicolon. Perfect. So step two, three are done. And step one was the first one on the top. So next, I'm going to go ahead and do our step four, which is the important step is executing the query. Obviously, to create a table, we need to tell Java to execute a certain query. So let's go ahead and begin creating the query. First, I'm going to just simply do a printout. So system.out.println. And here I'm just going to say creating table in the given database, right? So creating the required table. Perfect. And next, let's go ahead and do the stmt equals conn and then the dot create statement method use the semicolon. So this tells that, okay, fine, I'm going to use the dot create statement. Next is the actual query that's going to come up. So let's go ahead and do string SQL equals. And I'm going to go ahead and use the create table. And then this is where the name of the table goes. So I'm going to call it let's say students. And then after students, I'm going to go ahead and concatenate this with the fields. I need to specify what goes in the student table. Like, for example, first name, last name, age, address, city, state, zip, and so on. So depending upon my own requirements, I can specify the fields that need to be created after the tables are created. Let's go ahead and concatenate this. I'm going to go first with the ID. So the ID is going to be the type called integer. And it cannot contain any null values, comma, plus, right? The next field is going to be the first name or just first. And the type is var. C-H-A-R, and of course, 255, which is the amount of spaces that this field can have as a maximum number, which is 255 characters. And then put a comma, plus, let's go ahead and do the last name, for example. Same type, 255. And then I need to put a parentheses, comma, concatenate this, maybe Let's say another field. I'm going to call this age. This is integer type, comma. And then, of course, I must also specify the primary key. So this is going to be primary key. And I'm going to link this with the ID. Perfect. So here is our actual query. Let me make some spaces here. Perfect. So we are going to go ahead and create a table called students with the following fields. ID, first name, last name, and then age. And next, I need to also tell STMT to update. So dot execute this query, and then update. So execute, and then update, lowercase, and the SQL as a parameter. Perfect. And simply do a printout for the user, so system.out.println, and just going to go ahead and type created the required table in the database. Perfect. Now, once that's done, 
next part of my code is for the exceptions, right? So I need to define the catch and then the try block, the catch, and then of course the, the finally block as well. So let's go ahead and do the catch first. So let's call the curly braces, do catch, SQL, exception. And the first one is going to handle the errors for the JDBC. So I'm going to say SE, for example, open the curly braces and just put a comment. So handle errors for JDBC. Make some spaces here so we can actually see. Perfect. And just the stack trace for SE. So it'll be stack trace for the print, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do se.print stack trace. Perfect. And once that's done, next I'm going to go ahead and simply close the curly braces. Do another catch for exception E. So this time it's going, only going to be exception E. Open the curly braces. And what this is going to do is basically handle errors for class for name. And same thing. Just do E, print, stack, trace, and of course just the nothing as a parameter. Close the curly braces. Here I'm going to go ahead and do the finally. And this basically closes the resources, right? So this block will close all the resources. So finally open the curly braces and we can put a comment here. So finally block basically is used to close the resources. And then once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and do try open the curly braces and then my statements, right? So I need to basically do conditions, two conditions. First is one going to be for the STMT equals null and the other one is going to be the CONN equals none. So just these two will go into the try block. So let's go ahead and do the first one. So try and then the condition if STMT is not equal to null, close the connection. So connection dot close. Perfect. Close the curly braces, do the catch again for SQL exception, SE. Open the curly braces. And then, of course, I need to close this curly braces and just do nothing at this point, just for this catch. Next, I'm going to go ahead and do the try, open the curly braces. And this is going to be for the if. CONN is not equal to null. And if that's the case, do the same connection dot close. Perfect. So let's scroll down so you can see. So once I've closed the connection for the try block, next I'm going to go ahead and do the catch SQL exception. SE, open the curly braces and do the print stack. So SE dot print stack with a semicolon. So finally we're done. So this will end basically the end of the finally, right? Try. And then I need to end the end try also, right? Curly braces, perfect. Let me go ahead and just do a quick system.out.println. Just displaying a message for the user saying, have a wonderful day. Goodbye. And this would just print out at the end. I also need to end the main. And then I think one more. We can check that out later. But this I know is for end main, right? Let's see. Scroll up. All right. So is one too many? So here's our code for creating a table in the backend database, right? So before I actually run this code, let's verify by going to our 
PHP MyAdmin backend database and just to see whether the table exists or not. And the table name is students and our database name is Java Rocks. So let's navigate to our PHP MyAdmin and then if I click on Java Rocks for example, there are no tables found in this database. Perfect. So let's go ahead, navigate back to our code. Let me go ahead and execute this. So fix up the quick spelling here, connecting to the selected database. Awesome. Let's run this. Let's click on the run button. Same and launch dialog box appears. Click OK. And let's see what errors do we have. And then, of course, I think we need the curly braces for the public class creating a table to close because we have the curly braces open for both of these. So let's scroll down and let's see if you can find it. OK, so after end main, I'm going to go ahead and just do the curly braces. And this is going to basically end the creating a table. Perfect. So that was the issue here. Perfect. So once we've re-verified our code, let's run the program again. Click on Run. Same as Launch dialog box appears. Click OK. And perfect. So let's see the output. First, connecting to the selected database. It did connect successfully, creating the required table. The required table in the database has been created. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. And of course, let's verify it by going to our backend database and to see whether the table which is called students right here with the following fields the primary key ID first name last name and age has been created or not so let's navigate to our my PHP admin and let me reload of course you need to refresh or reload the navigation panel and once I do this let's go ahead and click on our database and perfect. So here's our students table. If I click on this table and navigate to the structure tab, I should be able to see all the fields. Awesome. So I see the ID, first name, last name, and then the age. And of course, the ID being the integer field, the varchar for first and last names, both having 255 characters in length. And then, of course, their age, which is an integer format also. So I hope this helps. Practice. And let's move to the next lesson.